Now, fair warning here, this is not a video for someone living in the United States. I have been requested many times to start talking about multi-tools that are accessible to individuals that live outside the United States, whether they live in Australia, Asia, the United Kingdom, um, South America, or basically anywhere else. So today I'm going to, first of all, just run through some of the different models that I think would be worth considering. Now, I don't know exactly what the prices are that you guys are gonna have access to. What I can tell you though, and because I've looked around, a lot of the websites carry these types of models. So I would suggest shopping for these items. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, one of the places that you can go to find multi-tools if you live outside the United States is a website called AliExpress. Now, the shipping takes quite, quite a bit of time for many places. However, the prices are reasonable, I'm told. It's, it's a little different because I don't see those prices. So, but I, what I do know is that the stock is incredibly similar. So we're gonna talk about some of the models that you might wanna consider, beginning with the Next Tool brand. So the Next Tool brand, I, I really like in part because their designs really seem to be only theirs. Um, they have, generally speaking, a Z shape where they have a plier on one end and then a scissor, a big scissor on the other. Now this one is one of the tools that I would recommend. This is called the Flagship Pro. In fact, I have a video coming out on this soon, especially after it's really good performance on the scissor gauntlet. Um, these range in price, and I don't know the exact prices. Maybe if you do find them on these websites, you will let me know down in the description and then where you, you are shopping from. But this is a decent tool. The quality is good. It has replaceable cutters, spring-loaded pliers. It has an incredibly good scissor, a good um, saw blade, locking blade, by the way, very important to note, um, and a pocket clip. So this would be a good example. The next one, another next tool is, that kind of goes by different names, but uh, this is the Black Knight in some variants. Uh, there's a couple that come with a bit kit, and then there's one that comes with a ferrocerium rod that you can actually take out of it, which is really cool. The thing I like about this, well, there's two things. Number one is it's very light. It has a pocket clip, so it's easy to carry, and it has a non-locking slip joint blade. So in places like the United Kingdom, where that legality might become an issue, you actually have access to a multi-tool that has a non-locking blade. So this is really for a very specific market. Interestingly enough, the saw does lock, which is a good thing if you're using it. And just like the Flagship Pro, you have spring-loaded pliers, not with replaceable cutters, and you have a ridiculously good scissor on the outside as well. So these are all really good. And as you can imagine, the mini flagship, which is quite a bit smaller than the big one, is kind of an excellent tool as well. All of these have the same downside, and that is primarily materials and quality control. I think the actual implementation here is surprisingly good. Um, it just comes down to how long they will last and the materials being used. So. If you're willing to take a chance or you can find them at a reasonable price, these are good options. All right, so the next style clearly is made by the same OEM, the same manufacturer, and uh, they, you, can, you can kind of recognize them. They all have a similar scissor that has a sort of safety catch here for cutting through uh, fabric and not hurting your skin, right? They all have this kind of similar design with locking outer implements, you know, that sort of sheep's foot design, you will recognize them, okay? They're pretty obvious, and I will show some pictures of them so you can recognize it. There are a ton, a ton of people selling this exact product, and the reason is they're only like eight or nine dollars in bulk price, so their base price is very, very low, and so you can probably find a decent deal on them between, I don't know, it all depends on where you live. But this might be the cheapest option and surprisingly is quite good. Um, when we tested it, it got a 16 out of 20 on our scissor gauntlet test. 
And that's a very, very, very good number. Um, the other implements such as the blade are actually really nice. The ergonomics are really nice. There's both a variant with a pocket clip and a single outer layer. And then there's also one that has a secondary set of tools, which gives you, uh, I believe, a file and a saw. So you gain the file and the saw if you do that, but that's primarily a tool that you'll carry in a holster. Just keep that in mind. They also make really well thought out pocket knife variants, which is really cool. So I saw a couple pictures of that as well on AliExpress. I'm not going to put links to any of this, okay? And the reason is, is they're not going to be useful to you if you're shopping from outside the United States. What I'm hoping this will do is give you an idea of what to look for. And maybe you guys can give me feedback after doing so and let me know what was successful and what was not, depending on where you live. So other than that, we have the Wave clones, right? We have the sort of Byberry, as it were, multi-tool, and then we got ones that look very similar to the Multiforce. Now, they're not exactly the same, and the big difference here is the inclusion of that pocket clip, and of course, that the uh, pliers on the Multiforce variants are by themselves where the outer implements are on the opposite side, which is really a really good thing. And only a couple, I think it's like HX Outdoors makes these variants. I don't know if that's the OEM or distributor or what, but they're the same people that make this, more than likely. And uh, this is pretty solid. So that would be another variant that I would definitely consider as well. And occasionally these are pretty decent, but try us not spend too much money on them because they're not as ideal when it comes to a uh, finger pinch. They don't have a pocket clip usually. And for some reason, the heat treatment on the scissor doesn't seem to be quite as good as this variant. I'm not sure why. So all of these I think are good choices for a good starting point. Um, I didn't see anything cheaper that I would recommend. Um, and I looked through quite a few of them. I really do believe that the variations of this tool are probably the best bang for your buck because they tend to be really inexpensive if you actually go through all the search pages and it can be a little tedious, but I do recommend you doing that. Um, and that's it. The only other brand that you might want to look at, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive is one called Roxon. And just like Next Tool, they have their own designs and uh, I don't see anyone else using them. So different unique approaches to them. I don't quite think they've dialed it in from a weight, uh, you know, dimension per perspective, but still really good. And everything I've seen of people who I've, who I know who have reviewed it, um, they're pretty solid. Like once again, materials and quality, it's in the mid range, but still, uh, these are worth looking at. So you take a look at those and I think you're going to have a pretty good start on finding multi-tools for you. I think what's going to happen with this video is I'm hoping you guys will post comments about your potential struggles relating to this. Um, and also any information that you can share with people in your country, in your area that might help them acquire a tool that they're looking for. So, Thanks again for watching this. I will make sure that it has subtitles as well. So you guys have a great day and we'll talk again soon.